welcome. welcome. Amen. I welcome every one of you. I'm happy I'm here. Are you happy you are here? The Lord is going to bless everyone tonight. Everyone here at the Alpha location. Everyone everywhere online. The Lord's hands will be upon you. It will turn your life right side up. Then he will use you to your community, your world, right side up in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Great God, mighty God, powerful God. We are asking, Lord, that heavens will open for everyone tonight. And your blessings will be showered down. Salvation for everyone. Healing for everyone. You glorify yourself in every life over here on the radio, on the television, online, everywhere in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. You can sit down waiting for the outpouring of the blessing of God to, for you tonight. Tonight we are talking on faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. Two branches of that faith. Saving faith and healing faith. The faith we manifest. The faith we exercise in Christ. Saving faith. The faith that saves. Healing faith. The faith that heals. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 8. But by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. That faith comes tonight. Faith in, uh, saving faith will manifest tonight. Once you do that, faith in Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary, tonight you are saved. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, reading from verse 8. And it says, There sat, there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. He never walked, he was born like that, paralyzed. Look at verse 9. And in verse 9, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. That's healing faith. He had faith to be healed. And then in verse 10, he tells us, And said with a loud voice, Stand upright, and thy feet on thy feet. And he lived and walked. Faith. 
faith in Christ. Saving faith. Healing faith. That's the faith you have tonight. And that faith will save you tonight. And that faith will heal you tonight. We're looking at one, two, three, three points before we pray. Saving faith in Christ, the Savior of all sinners. Number two, show faith in Christ, the healer of all sicknesses. Number three, steadfast faith in Christ, the conqueror in all his subjects. You heard when we were singing crosses, Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we who believe in him as King of kings and Lord of lords, we are his subjects. He lives in us. And therefore, every situation in our lives, he becomes the conqueror. He will conquer for you. Every problem, every challenge, every situation, tonight, he conquers for you. He conquers for me. Say it now. He conquers for me. He saves you. He heals you. And he conquers for you. Look at number one. Number one, saving faith in Christ, the Savior of all sinners. He is our Savior. The Father in heaven, God in heaven, has appointed him our Savior. And he has done everything that needs to be done so that every sinner will be saved. He wants us to repent. He wants us to believe. And then salvation comes. There's an interesting verse I want to read to you now. Acts chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. The Lord, the God of our fathers, raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Uh, verse 31. Very special for you and for me. Very special for everyone on earth. Him as God exalted at, at his right hand. And he says to be a prince and a savior. God in heaven has appointed him, has exalted him, that he will be a prince, a king, king of kings, and our savior. Now look at what follows. For to give repentance and forgiveness of sins. You know, there were times, and there are still times, when you ought to repent. You ought to turn around, and you try. But you cannot even be sorrowful for what you, you want to be sorrowful, but you are not. You want to turn, repent, but you cannot. You say, how do people repent? I want to repent so I can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And my heart is hard. My mind is tall. It's like there is somebody manipulating my heart. I cannot repent. God is so good. 
that he says he gives repentance. What you cannot do by yourself, as we begin to pray, the Lord will give you repentance. So now, I don't have any excuse. I cannot repent. And then he gives me repentance. I cannot change. He gives me the change. I could not turn away from my evil. He says, come, give me your hand. I'll turn you away from that evil. And then he gives forgiveness. Tonight, you don't have an excuse. You will repent. I will repent. And then he'll grant you forgiveness and salvation. Look at Acts chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 23. Acts chapter 13, verse 23. It says, Of this man's seed as God according to the promise raised up unto us unto israel a savior and he mentioned the savior jesus no other name no other person no other leader no other human can give us salvation christ and christ alone Jesus, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Give your life to him. Come to him. Decide for him. And your salvation happens immediately. For that, amen. Now look at verse 38. In verse 38, it says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and that this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. He's preached unto you freedom, forgiveness, salvation verse 39 in verse 39 and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of moses You cannot be justified by the law of Moses. What does that mean? Why then did God give that law, especially the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt have no other God apart from me. And you thought, I don't have any other God, but you make yourself a God. And you want everybody to bend and bow to you. You're broken that false commandment. That shall not call the name of God in vain. That's the law, but that does not justify you because any little thing your car goes into a pit oh god oh god and then you tell a lie you say god is my witness the law of mercy cannot justify you can only condemn you you are taking the name of the lord in vain And thou shalt not make an image of things in the sea, in the sky, anywhere. 
from the from being a little child we like dolls we like you know those things uh, it's easier now because they don't have to carry it they can just manufacture it with plastic and then we carry that about if anybody tries to take that from you you cry you cry and in life we have the things we have made works of our hand we carry about if anybody tries to snatch anything like that from us we cry we're sorrowful and remember the day of the Lord to keep it holy and you are not doing all those uh, festivities and I don't worship and don't. exactly that's exactly what people do that's the law of Moses you cannot keep that law and that law cannot justify you the law is to show you your weakness and to point you to Christ who can save you and justify you from the broken law Honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. You know, when we were very young, we couldn't voice it out. But because our father would say, don't go this way. Don't have your way. Don't go there. In our heart, we didn't honor him. We hated him. And as mommy calls the little girl, don't walk this way, don't join uh, these people uh, because it will not help you in life. You couldn't talk at that time because you thought your mother might, might, might uh, spank you. But in your heart, what, what your mother is this? Don't go this way, don't sit down, don't uh, stand up, don't smoke, don't drink. What kind of mother is this? We didn't honor them. And then, mommy will, when we're not there, the uh, portmanteau, the box, the bag will take to, uh, to school. Mommy will scrutinize and watch everything. Ah, what kind of thing is this? And then our phone, after all, it's mommy, daddy that bought the phone. Uh, they want to check up what's there, what's there, what's there. And then they challenge you. My daughter, what's this? Who is this? Whose picture is this? Which one is this? Instead of honoring your father or your mother, you hated them. The law of Moses could not save any of us. Could not justify us. It's only Jesus Christ who bore our sin on the cross of Calvary that can save us and do for us what the law of Moses could not do. Thou shalt not steal. You know, we, we have a family devotion every morning. And they read the law to us, the law of Moses, thou shalt not steal. If, because if you steal, eventually it becomes your habit and you might end up in prison. And right there at home, we look at the fridge. And we take drinks. Mommy is not there. Daddy is not there. Exactly what he taught us in the morning devotion. We steal. We steal from the pot. We steal from the fridge. We steal everywhere we go. And then mommy comes in. We chewing that thing in the mouth. What's that? I said, what's that? What are you chewing? I am sorry, mommy. <laughs> I will continue to chew. Mommy, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so very, very sorry. I will keep on chewing. And you know, it's the law. Mostly it condemns you. 
we lie. <laughs> My mommy used to say, anyone who lies will steal. Look up at me here. Before I became born again, I stole. You cannot laugh because the same story can be told about you. I lied. And mommy said, if you lie, but the law of Moses could not save me or justify me. It's only Christ. Christ the Savior. You know, Moses carried a rod. Whatever he did, the rod was in his hand. If he wanted to part the sea, the Red Sea, he used the rod. If he wanted to get water out of the rock, he used the rod. And that is symbolic. For the law of Moses to get anything out of you, the rod, you have to smite the man, you have to smite the boy or the girl. It was the dispensation of the rod. Have, have you noticed Jesus never carried a rod about? All he carried was love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have in life. And Jesus did not get people to walk in the right way by the road. He made us to walk in the right way by forgiving our sin, by justifying us, by personally turning our life around. He is our Savior. Tonight I come to announce to you that Jesus is your Savior. The rod of judgment will not be applied on you when you come to Jesus, the Savior. Receive him tonight, he will save you. Believe on him tonight, he will save you. Let somebody say, Amen. We're coming to number two now. Number two, the sure faith in Christ, the healer of all sicknesses. All your sicknesses are healed tonight. I didn't hear a good amen. All you need to do is to present yourself unto Christ. And the touch of the Lord. And the power of the Lord will save and heal you tonight in Jesus. Look at Acts chapter 3, verse 16. It says, And his name, through faith in his name, has made the strong. Whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Faith in Christ, bringing us, bringing us. The faith in him. Was faith by the way? Was faith that we manifest in Christ that gets us healed? It is full assurance in truth. 
trusting him. No doubt in your heart. No doubt in your mind. Faith is full assurance in trusting him. What's faith? Forgetting all I trust him. I forget all the past failure. I forget all the past uh, fainting. I forget all the past pain. I'm forgetting all my sickness. As I lay my sickness at the feet of Jesus. I don't keep talking about the sickness. I don't keep on nursing, nurturing the sickness. I bring my sickness at the feet of Jesus. Leave it there. Forget it there. Forsaking all my sicknesses, I trust him. That's what you do tonight. You come to the Lord and you forget all the pain and everything, all the swelling, all the cancer, all the ulcer, everything. Leave everything at the feet of Jesus and tonight you are healed. And in that healing, there's connection between you and the one who has come to present, provide the healing for you. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Such as I have. I don't have silver. I don't have gold. I don't have the tablet or the pills. I don't have injection. I don't have any medical tool to help you. But such as I have. Such as I have. Peter, if you don't have silver, you don't have gold, you don't have all those tools, what else do you have? I have the name of Jesus. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, the Father will give it to you. Believe in that name. Rely on that name. Lay your body in on that name. And as you believe, whatever Christ has done will happen to you. And greater things than he did will happen unto you. Can you see how that command say amen is so long? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's what I'll tell you tonight. Because the name of Jesus has not lost his power. Lame man, you rise up and walk. Blind man, blind woman, you will open your eyes and see. Cancer patient, you touch that place and will mention the name of Jesus. That name with his virtue, with his power, will pass through your hand and take all cancer away from your body. Your ulcer will be healed. Your swelling will vanish away. And Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. <clears throat> Look at verse 7. 
very interesting verse and he took him by the right hand he took him by the right hand why uh, you know if you are a farmer even if you are not a farmer if you follow daddy to the farm when you are very young daddy wants to clear this tree out of the of his field he wants to take the tree out of his farm he takes the cutlass and he cuts and cuts and cuts and the tree falls down even though the tree is falling down as you look at the leaves the leaves are still as fresh as ever because they just cut down but that tree is dead already you come back the following day all the leaves are dead and dry it's the same thing with your sickness we caught down that sickness with the name of Jesus that cannot fail when we say in Jesus name I pray that tree falls now but as we look at the leaves they look like pastor they're still fresh no they are dead your cancer is dead at the mention of the name of Jesus cancer gone swelling gone and so we're praising the Lord thank God my tree of sickness has fallen down we're not looking at the leaves we're not looking at the feeling we're not looking at what we can see but we know that tree of cancer is falling did you hear one of the testimonies tonight after we prayed and they said in jesus name my pain was still there i was going home my pain was still there i woke up the next morning now i see all the leaves are dry there is no way that sickness can remain on you when we mention the name of jesus And so he took him by the right hand. Why? The man was dazed. The man was surprised. I have never taken a step in my life. And Peter is saying, rise up and walk. And so he sat down there. But Peter knew. Watch. The man did not know. He knew that when you mention the name of Jesus, that paralysis and that impotence has to go. And then to assure him of what he knew, what the man did not know, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Uh, that's what our ushers do that's what our counselors do that's what our members of the choir do because they were chill there we have mentioned the name of Jesus they know that you are healed and you are still wondering I feel this, I feel this so they lend you their hand and they lift you up and behold it is right there you get up and you walk and you run tonight in Jesus name And lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. 
and then in verse 8 it says and he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God your own time has come I said your own time must come. Look at Acts chapter 14 verse 7. Acts chapter 14. We're looking at verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. And there they preached the gospel. And in verse 8, it says in verse 8, And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never, who never, who never had walked. And then in verse 9, in verse 9, the same heard Paul speak, Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Paul was the preacher. And that man in Lystra was the sick one and he was impotent in his feet he had never walked what interests me is that paul looking at him knew that he had faith to be healed how did paul see the faith how did Paul know this man is going to be healed tonight? Because Paul saw that he had faith to be healed. As Paul was speaking, the man was looking at Paul eyeball to eyeball. And Paul saw that this man, sick man, impotent man, will not take his eyes away from Paul. Not only that, every time Paul the apostle said, there is healing in the atonement. There is healing in what Christ had done. The man was nodding his head, nodding his head. And Paul knew this one tonight must be healed <clears throat> and as Paul said if you can only believe all things are possible to him who believes the man leaned forward as if he was going to stand up he could see it on his face. He could see it in his action. And Paul perceived that this man had faith to be healed. Look at verse 10. And Paul said with a loud voice. Paul declared with a loud voice. What was that in the cage? Paul did not waver. Paul did not vacillate here and there. Paul did not say, I must be careful. What if I say, stand up, and the man does not stand up? No, 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 a thousand times. He knew like I know that the name of Jesus will never fail. He knew like I know that any time, any day, anywhere, you bring the name of Jesus to confront, 
any sickness. He knew that that sickness must vanish away. That's why he said with a loud voice. And that's why I say with a loud voice, your healing has come. Stand upright on thy feet. Uh, you know the beautiful thing here, Paul. Did not, Paul did not use his handkerchief like the one I have here to wave before him and lay on him. Paul did not use or incense or oil or what he call holy water. There's no holy water anywhere water is water what i'm saying is no physical contact here i am there you are you hear the word and the word will do a creative miracle in your life and he lived and he walked. Your time is tonight. Your healing is tonight. The name of Jesus has never failed. It will not fail in your life. Amen. Amen. You know what amen means? It means so let it be. And the second part of that amen is so it is. When I say amen, I mean so it is in your life tonight. When you say amen, it means I am assured. I have faith. It is done in my life tonight in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three now. Number three is steadfast faith in Christ, the conqueror, in all his subjects. Faith conquers. Conquers your weakness. Conquers your infirmity. Conquers your sinfulness. Conquer all your sicknesses. Conquers any demonic power or spirit. Faith conquers. Tonight you have conquered. Sin, you have conquered. Satan, you have conquered. See Papa shout, shouting here and the children saying, Amen, Amen. <laughs> it tells us in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. What does that mean? My unbelief is, is crucified with Christ. You know, they always say that man is a doubting Thomas. It's a doubting Thomas. But tonight, your doubt is crucified with Christ. You know uh, what they call some people? They say it's a perpetual doubter. But tonight, all the doubt is crucified with Christ. Unbelief will not control your life anymore, and doubting will not con will not uh, control your life anymore. My nature. Of is crucified with Christ. 
nevertheless I live nevertheless you live yet not I my old self my old doubt my old habit will not live with me anymore but Christ lives in me Christ the Savior lives in me Christ the healer lives in me tell me anywhere Dr. Jesus is living every sickness how to go out anywhere Savior Jesus is living or seen as we go away anywhere anywhere the conqueror Jesus is living anything that control your life before alcohol cigarette and the wine control they have to go out Christ and sin cannot live together in the same heart. Christ and sickness cannot live together in the same room. Christ and evil spirit cannot live together in the same person. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, by the faith, by the faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God. What does Christ believe? What's the faith of the Son of God? Whosoever comes to him will be saved. That's his faith. And then he says, He heals because with his stripes we are healed. What's the faith of Jesus? That anyone that contacts me, darkness will vanish away. Disease will vanish away. That person will be healed. And then he said, who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. And Christ is looking at you. And he said, I gave myself for you, for your salvation, for your healing, for your deliverance. Believe what he believes. Have the faith, the faith of Christ. He gave himself for you because he loved you. As you come to him today, you are saved. As you call his name today, you are healed. And then you confess because you have the faith of Christ, I am saved. I am healed. Let somebody there say, Amen. In Romans chapter 8, verse 38, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, We are more than conquerors. You conquer tonight. I said, You conquer tonight. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Who are conquerors? I said, You are conquerors. The people that now stand and they march on the enemy. Sin is your enemy. That sin will leave your heart and come under your feet and you march on sin. The 
that sickness that takes joy away and takes peace away and takes money away and then we are there in the hospital just languishing and uh, suffering that sickness is your enemy you are a conqueror tonight you will stand on that sickness it will no more be on your body it will be under your feet Congratulations, you are saved tonight. Congratulations, you are healed tonight. Congratulations, you are delivered tonight. Your amen shows you have faith in God and what you believe will happen tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Your salvation is as near as your willingness to be saved. I want to be saved. Your salvation is very near. I'm willing to be saved. Your salvation is very near. He gives you repentance. He gives you forgiveness. He gives you salvation. It's bowed, eyes closed. You want that salvation of Christ right now. Raise up your hand. See me, I'm raising up my hand for you. Raise up your hand and say, Lord, I want salvation. I'm willing to have salvation. Raise up that hand. The Lord has seen you there. He will save you tonight. You're raising up your hand for salvation. Please stand up. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. That you know he brings salvation to you tonight. Stand up and receive. I'm so happy Jesus wants to save everyone that wants salvation. Anywhere you are, raise up your hand and stand up. As we are standing up, tell the Lord, Lord, I believe you. You died for me. You will give me forgiveness and salvation. I don't know how to repent. Lord, grant me, give me repentance. He's giving you now. And then you confess your sin. You tell him, Lord, I'll never go back to that again. I cannot do that by myself. But I believe you that you will make it happen in my life. Forgive me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Take the remembrance of all my sins away. Thank you, Lord. I believe. I believe. Like that tree that was cut down. And the leaves appear fresh. Whatever feeling I have, I trust your word. I believe your word that the name of Jesus has cut down that tree of sin in my life. It is unto you according to your faith. You are saved. If you believe that, you are saved. Your sins are forgiven. If you believe that, your sins are forgiven. Invite the Savior in. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. 
will abide with you as your savior and you will not go back to sin anymore keep up that turn and pray with you now father in the name of jesus everyone comes now willing to be saved wanting to be saved and i pray in your love in your mercy because of calvary forgive all their sins in jesus name let your spirit bear witness with their heart they are saved thank you lord it is done it is confirmed in jesus name we pray another amen remember that means lord i believe so it is you are saved so it is i said so it is final amen another amen now god bless you keep on standing our counselors will come there to give you some helping hand uh national overseer comes now also do due to lead us in the counseling period and then after that i'll come back because we have a guaranteed miracle of healing tonight you have taken the greatest decision of life salvation greater than all the money in the world greater than all the houses in the world greater than all the cars in the world when you close your eyes now this is what you will tender before God to be able to go to heaven so be serious with the decision you have taken now allow the counselors to get your true document I mean particulars so that we'll be able to help you give your right name give correct phone number and where you are staying write the correct one we have laid down our lives for you to help you to be saved to maintain the salvation till the day you leave this world. Making a decision at a stadium is just like laying a foundation of a house. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, at 3 p.m., at the VIP stand of the Babayara Sports Stadium. All those who have raised up their hands and they have decided for the Lord are to report there for us to instruct you, to guide you, and to help you. May 17, 1975. I was a student at Kwadaso Agri College. Our visitation choir came there. Now our visitation choir for Nebaho. The preacher was Isaac Ababio of Blessed Memory. He made an altar call. I gave my life to Christ. I remember at that time he will come with the wife and some people to the school to teach us. If you have decided for Christ, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. We obeyed. And by the grace of God, with our entrance into deeper life, 
our Father in the Lord has given us much as the Lord gives him. And that is why we are what we are by the grace of God. You don't just raise up your hand and say it is finished. No, it is not finished. It is the beginning of having a, a better life, spiritually speaking, physically, all around till you leave this world. We are there to help you. All the ministers and all the pastors, not only the deeper life people who are writing your names, there may be other people from other churches. Give them the chance to help you so that you can stand firm in the Lord. If you want to get to heaven, you need to be taught. You need to be instructed. You need to be heard. And as you surrender yourself, all these things can be yours. So be obedient. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link. GCKHQ.org slash connect. GCK. It's okay. Pastor's message, I mean, displayed on your screen. Player, please visit the link and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio and television, and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp. Plus 23491-5444-9263. Plus 23491-5444-9263. Ushers, please be focused and make sure that you do a good job so that those who are reading in the follow-up, will know what you have written down. There will be a special meeting called Lunch Hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus tomorrow, I mean, tomorrow by 3 p.m., at the VIP stand. And this announcement is not only for the Alpha location. It goes to all over the world, all the global world, where the program is going on and people have hooked up Please know where the church location is. As we, they direct you, you meet them and be part of this program we are talking about. There will also be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ in this program. It will be on Sunday, 4th August. 
ya be ya punto ana se nhe mo ma dudu a mo onla abe fontain tan so a wo mo hwe wo mo tie no mo nya kwaje wo mo no ye ni o mo nyina be nya jisu asron ko eye busum ye be simu kwasi de din ka ye 4th august no ye ni mo we shia a pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet na ye software ni ji ho na ni be ji so se once again, I want to encourage you. If you take it important, it will be good for you. This is for your life. It is either life or death as you live in this world. When you take these things seriously and you are grounded and you become firm in the Lord, when you are dying, it will not be difficult. You will not be afraid because you decided for Christ, you continue with Christ, and where death will meet you, you will not be afraid. You will go to Jesus you have decided for. And but if you become entangled with the affairs of this world, you have time for everything in this world. You have time for funeral, you have time for wedding, you have time for everything. But come and sit down. Let us teach you how you can continue with Christ. You don't have time. You are doing yourself a great harm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., by the grace of God, we are meeting you. If you have decided today, you decided yesterday, be there. Counselors, make us to know where you have reached. If you have finished, please raise up the flag and let's know so that our Father in the Lord will come and pray for us for the other blessings the Lord has for us tonight apart from the salvation. <laughs> Make sure you give your correct name, correct address, correct phone number. Just say Udi Udi Ebema. What telephone number? Ebema. Any baby I would say, I have been here very sure why you be here. You decided because the message directed you, you saw yourself, that's why you raise up your hand. Continue in that decision. Don't let the devil snatch your salvation you have God. It will do you good. It will change you. It will make the people in your house to see that you have become a new creature. Your friends who do not agree with you will part ways with you. Don't mind. The greatest of all decisions. Ushers, we are waiting for you. Counselors, yeah, we see some flags being raised. What about the other parts of the field?
Okay. Okay, thank you very much. We invite our Father in the Lord to come and uh, pray for us. Amen. You may call us arrived. Healing has arrived. Deliverance has now arrived for you. Whatever challenge you have, raise up one hand and let the other hand where the challenge is. At the name of Jesus, diseases are healed. Yes, the name of Jesus. Demons have to go. Yes, Depression, gone. Head problem, gone. Bodily problem, gone. Where are you? It's coming to you now. Raise up your hand. In the other hand where you have the challenge, tonight you'll carry miracle back home. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, a great God, glorious God, you are. Loving God, compassionate God, you will never fail in the case of anyone. Lord, according to your promise, I send your healing to everyone right now in Jesus' name. From the top of the head to the tip of the toe, Lord, I pray healing will flow to your people. Healing virtue of Christ come upon you and come through you right now in Jesus name madness get out from there blindness come out of there dumbness come out in Jesus name goiter hunchback swelling anywhere Get out now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Incurable disease of any type be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Cancer, you are healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Ulcer, you are healed in Jesus' name. H I V H be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Joint pain, the knee, the ankle, the elbow, the shoulder, the wrist, you are healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Blood problem. Either issue of blood, or poison blood, or any kind of disease related to the blood. Be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> any problem inside your bone that they say this sickness, this disease has spread in the bone. Be healed in Jesus' name. That pile, you are healed in Jesus' name. Arthritis, you are healed in Jesus' name. Paralysis and withered hand, withered legs, you are healed in Jesus' name. The one leg shorter than the other, the one arm shorter than the other, Lord, touch them, heal them, make them equal now in Jesus' name. Every form of sickness, 
every kind of disease touch everyone now over here at the alpha location online everywhere over the radio over the television bring your healing power to everyone confirm the healing confirm the deliverance confirm the miracle for everyone here tonight in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord it is done for him for her for everyone there it is done in jesus name it is confirmed check up yourself and you see that miracle that healing that deliverance right there 